How did I get involved in writing? Well, I always had. Uh, my father had a royal typewriter upstairs in his office. Mother, in pure snit of finding me something to do, taught me how to type. So I would go up and I would write these stories, end upon end upon end. I think the first one I wrote was when I was eight or nine, and it was Chief, Flame of Herd and, uh, Chief, no, Flame, Chief of Herd and Track. And it was all about a special, unlikely colored horse. And Dad used to read us from Kipling's Barrack Room Ballads, and he had a stentorious voice, and he would really recite them, the roll off. In India, sunny climb, where I used to spend my time a serving of their majesty, the queen, of all of the crew, finest man I knew was our regimental beastie, Gunga Din. Or, they're hanging Danny Deemer in the morning. You're hanging Danny Deemer, you can hear the Dead March play. I found my home in science fiction. They were just as crazy as I was. So much of it has come from idle curiosity. I mean, H.G. Wells decided that Mars, our nearest neighbor, should try and, and take this world over. <laughs> it's been scaring us for years. Science fiction has always had a very good reputation that the elder statesmen help the, the new ones coming in, and we're not a nail biter or a hair puller. We really want other people to succeed too. There's plenty of room for all of us. I had some young lady send me her book. It had been rejected by three publishers already. And I was feeling in that kind of a mood, and I started reading it, and it, it caught me. It had me, it had good reader hooks, as they say in the trade. But she had a problem. She was supposed to be a, an English teacher, and she used the worst English I have seen in a long while. And she was constantly using uh, the four-letter words to, you know, extremists. And she had a habit of making parenthetical remarks proving that she knew something that the reader probably didn't. Well, you don't do that to your readers. That's talking down to them, and you'll soon turn them off reading any of your books. But uh, the story and some of the material she had was too good, so I whacked out the bad parts, set it back to her, and I said, this is my recommendation. Retype it and cut out the parenthetical remarks, silly most of the time, and just go on with the action. So. Not only does the book get published, but it won an award for Romantic Times. So I don't generally do that, but I was just in that sort of a mood. The biggest difficulty that science fiction writers, and any writers, is sitting the bum down in the chair and placing the fingers on the keyboard and doing it. Uh, for some reason, they think that they had this marvelous idea for a story and it's going to write itself. Well, in one aspect, it does write itself, but you have to do the typing in and the correcting and the spelling. I worked, I've been writing for 58 years. I have 78 published novels, not all at the same time, but I occasionally there when I was really right on it, I'd do two or three novels a year. So there's a fair amount of, of work. And I sat me down in the chair and I made myself write. You're gonna sit down and produce and it's lonely. And maybe you'll get up and have yourself a sandwich or another cup of coffee, but you're not free to do a lot of things that people in nine to five jobs are. Well, I, I like it. I'm working for myself, and I like that. I can tell myself off faster than anyone else can, and I do. But uh, I wouldn't do anything else. And get paid for what I like doing? Ha! <laughs> I can't not write. It's a double negative, I know, but that only makes the positive more positive. <laughs>